Okay, in today's video, we're going to talk about using the SQL Server agent. And specifically, I'm going to show you guys how to schedule a backups using the Ola Halligren store procedures uh, to backup your databases. And at the end, we're going to jump into SSMS. And I'm going to show you exactly how to set up a job. So just a real quick brief introduction to the database backup store procedure. This is a public domain uh, source code that you can download and use in your SQL Server. So you just go to the Ola Halligren website and you would download the maintenance solution, which includes the database backup store procedure. And then what you're going to do is go in and make some uh, configurations in there. You're going to specify, you know, most importantly, where your backups are going to go, but also like what types of backups you're going to be running and those sorts of things. And these are all just parameters that you're going to pass into the store procedures. And there's a lot of error handling in these, a lot of things that you don't have to uh, go and implement yourself. So that's why it's a great head start tool for getting your databases backed up. So in order to start working with the SQL agent job, you know, your first thing you need to do is make sure that you're able to access the SQL agent service, which is going to be just a folder in your SSMS. Uh, if you have access to it, it'll show up there and you'll be able to configure and edit jobs. And then we're going to do go and get our backup settings that we want to that we want to use. So most importantly, again, it's going to be the database type or backup types you're going to be running, uh, what locations you're going to be sending those backups to, and then retention policies for your environment. So how long do you want to keep those backups around? Then you want to make sure that the SQL agent account has necessary permissions to perform the backups. And you want to make sure that the SQL agent uh, process can actually, that login that's, that the process is running as, has the ability to create and edit files in the directory that you've chosen as your backup target. So in order to configure an SQL agent job, you need to go to your SSMS Management Studio, and you're going to go and look for the instance that you're going to be working with and expand that and you'll see a folder that is specific to the SQL agent. And then all you have to do is right click on uh, a folder there and you basically create a new job there and you'll go through the wizard to name, configure your job and, that's, and specify all the properties that are needed. Each job is going to have one or more steps. So you're going to add a step in this case and it's going to be, and there's different types that you can create. And in this case, we're going to use a TSQL type of job, but there's a lot of other things you can do, like run PowerShell. Um, you can run command shell prompts, and you can also launch uh, SSIS jobs right from within a, a job step. Then you're going to configure your, your job step. In this case, we're going to configure it to call the specific procedure that we want to run to run the backups. So we need to identify the database that we've installed the database backup store procedure in. And then we need to give it the parameters in order to for the job to be able to run. So we're going to specify things like what databases we're going to back up, where the locations are, what kind of retention. There's all kinds of parameters in there. We're not going to go into too much detail on this today. I have another video that talks about all the specifics of database backup, but we're going to go over the high level stuff. Then we're going to verify the backup locations make sure we can write there and there's a sufficient space to, to write the backups. And then we're going to test our job. We're going to actually run it, make sure, make sure it uh, runs successfully. Very important thing is to schedule your job. So you want it to run on a regular schedule and you've got lots of options there. Um, usually with backups, you're going to have uh, at least a daily going on. Uh, and you can vary things. You can have different types of backups. You can have a, a full weekly that you're running and you can follow that up with daily incrementals. And so that you'll be able to stitch together all those backups. And you could actually have a lot more backup retention when you do it this way, because those differential backups are a lot smaller in most cases than the full backups. Then once set the times that we're going to be running these, you want to try to time your backups to minimize your impact on your production environment. And you want to enable job notifications. You want to make sure that you know what's going on. You want to, in most cases with backups, I actually configure them to email me whenever they complete so that I know they're succeeding uh, and I know when they're failing. You can monitor the job history. Um, that's another uh, option right within SSMS. So you just right click on the job and you can view its history. We just talked about job notifications, so you want to know what's going on with the jobs, whether it's succeeding and failing. 
And you can look, track inside, uh, when you look at the job history, you can actually look at how long it takes to run the job, which is something that you want to keep an, keep an eye on, make sure that things aren't running too long. Sometimes backups can run for very long periods of time. So you want to uh, really keep an eye on that, make sure that you're not bleeding into your normal uh, peak periods of your day and have your backup affecting performance of the system. And then you want to do periodic backup verification. So really, you really want to, the best verification is actually restoring those backups. So taking those backups somewhere else, restoring them, making sure everything's okay. A lot of environments that I work in will build a refresh process where we're going to take the data that's in production and we'll put it into a testing environment. And so if we can automate that, we've got automatic verification of our backups on a regular basis. So we're going to jump in just in a minute here and take a look at how to configure a job. So we're going to configure a job in SSMS that's going to call the database backup procedure. So let's jump in there now. We're jumping over to Management Studio now. And as you can see, I've got my connection to my SQL Server database. Here's my SQL agent. I navigate to the Jobs folder, and we're going to add a job. So we just say New Job. And we need to give it a name, so we're going to call it, uh, this is going to be backing up this SSTS admin database. So I'm going to call it SST, SSTS admin backup. And then I need to give it, give it job steps, which I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to execute a backup. So create a new step. And we're get, there's different types here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with T-SQL, which is default. But there's all kinds of other stuff you can do in here. You can call PowerShell commands, operating system commands, uh, integration services packages. But like I said, we're gonna stick with the T-SQL command, and we're gonna say execute backup. And we can say what we want to run as. I'm gonna go with the default, which is gonna be the SQL agent user. Uh, I need to give it a database context. So where is the command I'm going to run? It's in this database and I've got it saved right here. So I'm going to call the Ola Halligren backup solution. And I'm going to paste that in there. So we're just executing this store procedure database backup. We're going to tell it run on the SSTS admin database. And we're giving it a location where the backup's going to go. We're going to give it a backup type, which is full. We want to verify it. Cleanup times means it's going to go out. And if there are existing backups there that are older than 72 hours, it's going to remove them. We want to compress our backups. We want to do a checksum. And we want to log the execution to the table in the database so that we can keep track of what's going on. All right. Now we need to give it a schedule. So come in here, give it a new schedule. We're going to say daily. And we're going to run this recurring. We're going to enable the schedule and we're going to pick daily here and we're going to go 12 a.m. So that means every day at 12 a.m. This is going to SQL agent is going to wake up and call this job. There are other things we can do in here. We're not going to set them all right, right now. We can set up notifications where we can say email and we give it a uh, operator, which I don't have really set up on this server, but would be an operator is just big, a mapping to an email address or a list of email addresses. And then we can say, specify when we want that notification, when the job succeeds, fails, completes, any of those are possible. And that's it. And then we can actually execute this just on demand. So we can say, start job at step. You know, this only has one step, so it's gonna start at, at step one. It's executing, shouldn't take too long, it's a pretty small database. So it's done. And then after the jobs are running, you could actually look at the history. So you go in here, you say, right click and say view history. And it'll show you the information about the job. Green is good. Green check means it succeeded. You can get details in here about the actual job that, that ran, all the details as far as the output that was produced. And you can also see here, which is useful, is like the duration, how long did it take? In this case, four seconds. For today's video, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. If you have questions, please drop them in the comments below or send them on to me. Please like the video and consider subscribing to the channel and share it with your friends. Thanks.